This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Recording by Gitu Milwani. The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Pierce. The letter E. Eat. Verb intransitive. To perform successively and successfully the functions of mastication, humectation, and deglutition. I was in the drawing room enjoying my dinner, said Brillant Savin, beginning an anecdote. What? interrupted Robrichand. Eating dinner in a drawing room? I must beg you to observe, monsieur, explained the great gastronome, that I did not say I was eating my dinner, but enjoying it. I had dined an hour before. Eavesdrop Verb intransitive Secretly to overhear a catalogue of the crimes and vices of another or yourself. A lady with one of her ears applied to an open keyhole heard inside. Two female gossips in converse free, the subject engaging them was she. I think, said one, that my husband thinks that she is a prying inquisitive minx. As soon as no more of it she could hear, the lady indignant removed her ear. I will not stay, she said with a pout, to hear my character lied about, by Gopt Sherini. Eccentricity, noun, a method of distinction so cheap that fools employ it to accentuate their incapacity. Economy, noun, purchasing the barrel of whiskey that you do not need for the price of the cow that you cannot afford. Edible, adjective. Good to eat and wholesome to digest. As a worm is to a toad, a toad is to a snake, a snake to a pig, a pig to a man, and a man to a worm. Editor. Noun. A person who combines the judicial functions of Minos, Radamatus, and Acidus, but is placable with an obolus. A severely virtuous censor but so charitable withal that he tolerates the virtues of others and vices of himself, who flings about him the splintering lightning and sturdy thunders of admonition until he resembles a bunch of firecrackers, petulantly uttering his mind as a tail of a dog, then straightway mummers a mild, melodious lay, soft as the cooing of a donkey intoning its prayer to the evening star. Master of mysteries and lord of law, High pinnacled upon the throne of thought, his face suffused with the dim splendors of the transfiguration, his legs intertwisted and his tongue a cheek, the editor spills his will along the paper and cuts it off in lengths to suit, and at intervals from behind the veil of the temple is heard a voice of the foreman, demanding three inches of wit and six inches of religious meditation, or bidding him turn off the wisdom and whack up some pathos. O oh, the Lord of Law on the throne of thought, a gilded impostor is he. Of shreds and patches his robes are wrought, his crown is brass, himself an ass, and his power is fiddle dee dee. Prankily, crankily, prattling of naught, silly old, quilly old monarch of thought, public opinion's camp follower he, thundering, blundering, plundering free, affected, ungracious, suspected, mendacious. Respected Contemporary by J. H. Bumbleshook Education Noun That which discloses to the wise and disguises from the foolish their lack of understanding. Effect Noun The second of two phenomena which always occur together in the same order. The first, call a cause, is said to generate the other, which is no more sensible than it would be for one who has never seen a dog except in pursuit of a rabbit to declare the rabbit the cause of a dog. Egotist, noun. A person of low taste, more interested in himself than in me. Megaseph, chosen to serve the state in the halls of legislative debate, one day with all his credentials came to the capital's door and announced his name. The doorkeeper looked, with a comical twist of the face, at the eminent egotist, and said, Go away, for we settle here all manner of questions naughty and queer, and we cannot have, when the speaker demands, to be told how every member stands, 
a man who to all things under the sky assents by eternally voting I. Ejection, noun, an approved remedy for the disease of garrulity. It is also much used in cases of extreme poverty. Elector, noun, one who enjoys the sacred privilege of voting for the man of another man's choice. Electricity, noun, the power that causes all natural phenomena not known to be caused by something else. It is the same thing as lightning, and its famous attempt to strike Dr. Franklin is one of the most picturesque incidents in that great and good man's career. The memory of Dr. Franklin is justly held in great reverence, particularly in France, where a waxen effigy of him was recently on exhibition, bearing the following touching account of his life and services to science. Monsieur Franklin, inventor of electricity, this illustrious savant, after having made several voyages around the world, died on the Sandwich Islands and was devoured by savages, of whom not a single fragment was ever recovered. Electricity seems destined to play a most important part in the arts and industries. The question of its economical application to some purposes is still unsettled, but experiment has already proven that it will propel a streetcar better than a gas jet and give more light than a horse. Elegy, noun. A composition in verse in which, without employing any of the methods of humour, the writer aims to produce in the reader's mind the dampest kind of dejection. The most famous English example begins somewhat like this. The cur foretells the knell of parting day. The loafing herd winds slowly over the lee. The wise man homeward plods. I only stay to fiddle faddle in a minor key. Eloquence. Noun. The art of orally persuading fools that white is the colour it appears to be. It includes the gift of making any colour appear white. Elysium, noun, an imaginary delightful country which the ancients foolishly believed to be inhabited by the spirits of the good. This ridiculous and mischievous fable was swept off the face of the earth by the early Christians. May their souls be happy in heaven. Emancipation, noun, a bondman's change from the tyranny of another to the despotism of himself. He was a slave, at word he went and came, his iron collar cut him to the bone. Then liberty erased his owner's name, tightened the rivets and inscribed his own, by G. J. Embalm, verb intransitive, to cheat vegetation by locking up the gases upon which it feeds. By embalming their dead and thereby deranging the natural balance between animal and vegetable life, the Egyptians made their once fertile and populous country barren and incapable of supporting more than a meagre crew. The modern metallic burial casket is a step in the same direction, and many a dead man, who ought now to be ornamenting his neighbor's lawn as a tree or enriching his table as a bunch of radishes, is doomed to a long inutility. We shall get him after a while, if we are spared, but in the meanwhile the violet and rose are languishing for a nibble at his glutinous maximus. Emotion, noun, a prostrating disease caused by the determination of the heart to the head. It is sometimes accompanied by a copious discharge of hydrated chloride of sodium from the eyes. Encominast, noun, a special, but not particular, kind of liar. End. Noun. The position furthest removed on either hand from the interlocutor. The man was perishing apace, who played the tambourine. The seal of death was on his face. T'was pallid, for t'was clean. This is the end, the sick man said, in faint and failing tones. A moment later he was dead and tambourine was bones, by Tinley Rokut. Enough, pronoun, all there is in the world, if you like it. Enough is as good as a feast, for that matter. Enough is as good as a feast for the platter, by Arberly C. Strunk. Entertainment, 
noun, any kind of amusement whose inroads stop short of death by injection. Enthusiasm, noun, a distemper of youth curable by small doses of repentance in connection with outward applications of experience. Byron, who recovered long enough to call it entusimusi, had a relapse which carried him off to Miss Alonghi. Envelope, noun, the coffin of a document, the scabbard of a bill, the husk of a remittance, the bedgown of a love letter. Envy, noun, emulation adapted to the meanest capacity. Epulet, noun, an ornamented badge serving to distinguish a military officer from the enemy, that is to say, from the officer of lower rank to whom his death would give promotion. Epicure, noun, an opponent of Epicurus, an abstemious philosopher who, holding that pleasure should be the chief aim of man, wasted no time in gratification from the senses. Epigram, noun, a short, sharp saying in prose or verse, frequently characterized by acidity or acerbity, and sometimes by wisdom. Following are some of the more notable epigrams of the learned and ingenious Dr. Demresh Hollebaum. We know better the needs of ourselves than of others. To serve oneself is economy of administration. In each human heart are the tiger, a pig, an ass, and a nightingale. Diversity of character is due to their unequal activity. There are three sexes, males, females, and girls. Beauty in women and distinction in men are like in this. They seem to be the unthinking kind of credibility. Women in love are less ashamed than men. They have less to be ashamed of. While your friend holds you affectionately by both your hands, you are safe, for you can watch both his. Epitaph, noun, an inscription on a tomb, showing that virtues acquired by death have a retroactive effect. Following is a touching example. Here lies the bones of Parson Platt, wise, pious, humble, and all that, who showed us life as all should live it, let that be said, and God forgive it. Erudition, noun. Dust shaken out of a book into an empty skull. So wide his erudition's mighty span, he knew creation's origin and plan, and only came by accident to grief. He thought, poor man, t'was right to be a thief. By Romash Plut. Esoteric. Adjective. Very particularly abstruse and consummately occult. The ancient philosophers were of two kinds. Exoteric, those that the philosophers themselves could partly understand, and esoteric those that nobody could understand. It is the latter that have most profoundly affected modern thought and found greatest acceptance in our time. Ethnology, noun, the science that treats of the various tribes of man as robbers, thieves, swindlers, dunces, lunatics, idiots, and ethnologists. Eucharist, noun, a sacred feast of the religious sect of Theophagy. A dispute once unhappily arose among the members of the sect as to what it was that they ate. In this controversy some 500,000 have already been slain, and the question is still unsettled. Eulogy, noun. Praise of a person who has either the advantages of wealth and power or the consideration to be dead. Evangelist, Noun, a bearer of good tidings, particularly in a religious sense, such as assure us of our own salvation and the damnation of our neighbors. Everlasting, adjective, lasting forever. It is with no small diffidence that I venture to offer this brief and elementary definition, for I am not unaware of the existence of a bulky volume by a sometime bishop of Worcester, entitled, a partial definition of the word everlasting as used in the authorized version of the Holy Scriptures. 
His book was once esteemed of great authority in the Anglican Church and is still, I understand, studied with pleasure to the mind and profit of the soul. Exception, noun, a thing which takes the liberty to differ from other things of its class, such as an honest man, a truthful woman, etc. The exception proves the rule is an expression constantly upon the lips of the ignorant, who parrot it from one another with never a thought of its absurdity. In the Latin, exceptio probat regulum means that the exception tests the rule, puts it to the proof, not confirms it. The malefactor who drew the meaning from this excellent dictum and substituted a contrary one of his own exerted an evil power which appears to be immortal. Excess, noun. In morals, an indulgence that forces by appropriate penalties the law of moderation. Hail, high excess, especially in wine. To thee in worship do I bend the knee, who preach astemaniousness unto me. My skull thy pulpit, as my paunch thy shrine. Precept on precept, eye and line on line, could ne'er persuade so sweetly to agree with reason as thy touch exact and free, upon my forehead and along my spine. At thy command, eschewing pleasure's cup, with the hot grape I warm no more my wit, when on thy stool of penitence I sit. I'm quite converted, for I can't get up. Ungrateful he who afterwards would falter to make new sacrifices at thine altar. Excommunication, noun. This excommunication is a word in speech, ecclesiastical, oft heard, and means the damning with bell, book, and candle, some sinner whose opinions are a scandal, a right permitting Satan to enslave him forever, and forbidding Christ to save him, by get huckle. Executive, noun, an officer of the government, whose duty it is to enforce the wishes of the legislative power, until such time as the judicial department shall be pleased to pronounce them invalid and of no effect. Following is an extract from an old book entitled The Lunarian Astonished, published by Pfeiffer and Company in Boston, 1803. Lunarian. Then, when your Congress has passed a law, it goes directly to the Supreme Court in order that it may at once be known whether it is constitutional? Terrestrian. Oh, no. It does not require the approval of the Supreme Court until having perhaps been enforced for many years, somebody objects to its operation against himself, I, I mean his client. The President, if he approves it, begins to execute it at once. Lunarian, ah, the executive power is part of the legislative. Do your policemen also have to approve the local ordinances that they enforce? Terrestrian, not yet, at least not in their character of constables. Generally speaking, though, all laws require the approval of those whom they are intended to restrain. Lunarian. I see. The death warrant is not valid until signed by the murderer. Terrestrian. My friend, you put it too strongly. We are not so consistent. Lunarian. But this system of maintaining an expensive judicial machinery to pass upon the validity of laws only after they have long been executed and then only when brought before the court by some private person, does it not cause great confusion? Terrestrian. It does. Lunarian. Why then should not your laws, previously to being executed, be validated, not by the signature of your president, but by that of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? Terrestrian. There is no precedent for any such cause. Lunarian. Precedent? What is that? Terrestrian. It has been defined by 500 lawyers in three volumes each. So how can anyone know? Exhort. Verb transitive. In religious affairs, to put the conscience of another upon the spit and roast it to a nut-brown discomfort. Exile. Noun. One who serves his country by residing abroad, yet is not an ambassador. An English sea captain, being asked if he had read The Exile of Erin, replied, No, sir, but I should like to anchor on it. Years afterwards, when he had been hanged as a pirate after a career of unparalleled atrocities, 
The following memorandum was found in the ship's log that he had kept at the time of his reply. August 3rd, 1842. Made a joke on the ex isle of Erin. Coldly received. War with the whole world. Existence. Noun. A transient, horrible, fantastic dream, wherein is nothing, yet all things do seem, from which we are wakened by a friendly nudge of our bedfellow death, and cry, O oh, fudge! Experience. Noun. The wisdom that enables us to recognize, as an undesirable old acquaintance, the folly that we have already embraced. To one who, journeying through night and fog, is mired neck deep in unwholesome bog, experience, like the rising of the dawn, reveals the path he should not have gone. By Joel Frad Bink. Expostulation. Noun. One of the many methods by which fools prefer to lose their friends. Extinction. Noun. The raw material out of which theology created the future state. End of the letter E in the Devil's Dictionary. Recorded by Gitu Melwani, March the 18th, 2006. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Kirkpatrick. The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce. Section 6. Letter F. Fairy. Noun. A creature, variously fashioned and endowed, that formerly inhabited the meadows and forest, it was nocturnal in its habit, and somewhat addicted to dancing and the theft of children. The fairies are now believed by naturalists to be extinct, though a clergyman of the Church of England saw three near Clochester as lately as 1855, while passing through a park after dining with the lord of the manor. The sight greatly staggered him, and he was so affected that his account of it was incoherent. In the year 1807, a troop of fairies visited a wood near Aix, and carried off a daughter of a peasant who had been seen to enter it with a bundle of clothing. The son of a wealthy bourgeoisie disappeared about the same time, but afterwards returned. He had seen the abduction, been in pursuit of the fairies. Justinian Gauss, a writer of the fourteenth century, avers that so great is the fairy's power of transformation that he saw one change itself into two opposing armies and fight a battle with great slaughter, and that the next day, after it had resumed its original shape and gone away, there were seven hundred bodies of the slain which the villagers had to bury. He does not say if any of the wounded recovered. In the time of Henry the Third of England, a law was made which prescribed the death penalty for Klingjing, Waodingj, or Mengjing, a fairy, and it was universally respected. Faith Noun Belief without evidence, in what is told by one who speaks without knowledge, of things without parallel. Famous Adjective Conspicuously miserable. Done to a turn on the iron, behold, him who to be famous aspired, content, while his grill has a plating of gold, and his twistings are greatly admired, by Hanson Brewbuddy. Fashion. Noun. A despot with whom the wise ridicule and obey. A king there was who lost an eye, in some excess of passion and straight his courtiers all did try to follow the new fashion. Each dropped one eyelid when before the throne he ventured thinking, t'would please the king that monarch swore, he slay them all for winking. What should they, they do? They were not hot to hazard such disaster. They dared not close an eye, dare not see better than their master. Seeing them lachrymose and glum, a leech consoled the weeper. He spread small rags with liquid gum, and covered half their peepers. The court all wore the stuff, the flame of royal anger dying. That's how court plaster got its name, unless I'm greatly lying. By Narmi Oaf. Festival. Noun. A festival, 
a religious celebration usually signalized by gluttony and drunkenness, frequently in honor of some holy person distinguished for abstentiousness. In the Roman Catholic Church, feasts are movable and immovable, but celebrants are universally immovable until they are full. In the earliest development, these entertainments took the forms of feasts for the dead. Such were held by the Greeks under the name of Nemesia, by Aztecs and Peruvians, and as in modern times they are popular with the Chinese, though it is believed that the ancient dead, like the modern, were light eaters. Among the many feasts of the Romans was Novem Dilia, which was held according to Livy whenever stones fell from the heaven. Felon Noun A person of greater enterprise than discretion, who in embracing an opportunity has formed an unfortunate attachment. Female Noun One of the opposing or unfair sex. The Maker, at creation's birth, with living things had stalked the earth, from elephants to bats and snails, they all were good, for all were males. But when the devil came and saw, he said, By thine internal law of growth, maturity, decay, these all must pass quick away, and leave untenanted the earth. Unless thou dost establish birth, then tucked his head beneath his wings, to laugh he had no sleeve. The thing with devilatry did so accord that he suggested to the Lord. The master pondered this advice, then shook and threw the fateful dice, where with all matters here below are ordered and observe the throw, then bent his head in awful state, confirming the decree of fate, from every part of earth anew, conscious thus consenting flew, while rivers from their courses rolled, to make it plastic for the mould, enough collected, but no more, for niggard nature hoards her store, he needed it to flexible clay, while Nick unseen threw some away, and then the various forms he cast, Gross organs first, and fine at last. No one at once evolved, but all by even touches grew and small. Degrees advanced till shade by shade, to match all living things he made. Females complete in all their parts, except his clay gave out. The hearts? No matter, Satan cried. With speed, I'll fetch the very hearts they need so flew away and soon brought back the number needed in a sack that night earth rang with sound of strife ten million males each had a wife that night sweet peace her pinion spread over hell ten million devils dead by g j fib noun a lie that has not cut its teeth an habitual liar's nearest approach to truth the peregrine of his eccentric orbit. When David said, All men are liars, Dave himself a liar, fit like any thief. Perhaps he thought to weaken disbelief by proof that even himself was not a slave to truth, though I suspect the aged knave had been all of her servitors the chief. Had he but known a fig's reluctant leaf, is more than ever she wore on land or wave. No. David served not naked truth when he struck the sledgehammer blow at all his race, nor did he hit the nail upon the head, for reason shows that it could never be, and the facts contradict him to his face. Men are not all liars, for some are dead. By Bartonel Quickner Fickleness Noun The iterated satiety of an enterprising affection. Fiddle Noun an instrument to tickle human's ears by friction of a horse's tail on the entrails of a cat. To Rome, said Nero, if to smoke you turn, I shall not cease to fiddle while you burn. To Nero, Rome replied, pray do your worst, tis my excuse that you were fiddling first. By Orm Plunge Fidelity Noun A virtue peculiar to those who are about to be betrayed. Finance, noun, the art 
or science of managing revenue and resources for the best advantage of the manager. The pronunciation of this word, with the eye long and the accent on the first syllable, is one of America's most precious discoveries and possessions. Flag. Noun. A colored rag borne above troops and hoisted on forts and ships. It appears to serve the same purpose as certain signs that one sees in vacant lots in London. Rubbish may be shot here. Flesh. Noun. The second person of the secular trinity. Flop. Verb. Suddenly, to change one's opinion and go over to another party. The most notable flop on the record was that of Saul of Tarsus, who had been severely criticized as a turncoat by some of our partisan journals. Flyspeck. Noun. The prototype of punctuation. It is observed by Govinius that the system of punctuation in use by various literary nations depends originally upon the social habits and the general diet of flies investing the several countries. These creatures, which have always been distinguished for a neighborly and companionable familiarity with the author, liberally or niggardly embellish the manuscripts in the process of growth under the pen according to their bodily habits bringing out the sense of the work by a species of interpretation superior to and independent of the writer's power the old masters of the literature that is to say the early writers whose work is so esteemed by later scribes and critics in the same language never punctuated at all but worked right along free-handed without the abruption of the thought which comes from the use of points. We observe the same thing in children today, whose usage in this particular is a striking and beautiful instance of the law that infancy of individuals reproduces the methods and stages of development characterizing the infancy of the race. In the working of these primitive scribes, all of the punctuations is found by the modern investigator with his optical instrument and chemical tests to have been inserted by the writer's ingenious and serviceable collaborators, the common housefly, mucus maledicta. In transcribing the ancient MSS for the purpose of either making the work their own or preserving what they naturally regard as divine revelations, later writers reverently and accurately copy whatever marks they find upon the papyrus or parchment to the unspeakable enhancement of the lucidity of the thought and value of the work. Writers, contemporarily, with a copyness naturally avail themselves of the obvious advantages of these marks in their own work, and with such assistance as the flies of their own households may be willing to grant. Frequently, rival and sometimes surpass the older compositions in respect at least of punctuation, which is no small glory. Fully to understand the important services that flies perform to the literature, it is only necessary to lay a passage of some popular novelist alongside a saucer of cream and molasses in a sunny room, and observe how the wit brightens and the star refines in accurate proportion to the duration of the exposure. Folly. Now, that gift and faculty divine, whose creative and controlling energies inspires man's minds, guides his actions, and adorns his life. Folly, although Erasmus praised thee once in a thick volume, and all authors known, if not thy glory, yet thy power have shown, deem to take homage from thy son who hunts through all the mazes brothers, fools, and dunce? To mend their lives and to sustain his own, however feebly by his arrows thrown, however each hide the flying weapons blunt, all father's folly, be it mine to raise, with lusty lungs here on his western strand, with all thine offspring thronged from every land, thyself inspiring me the song of praise, and if too weak I'll hire to help me bawl, Dick Watson Gilder, gravest of us all. By our Aramis Loto Frop. Fool. Noun. A person who pervades the domain of intellectual speculation and diffuses himself through the channels of moral activity. He is omnific, omniform, omniprecipient, omniscient, omnipotent. He it was who invented letters, printing, 
the railroad, the steamboat, the telegraph, the platitude, and the circle of the sciences. He created patriotism and taught the nation's war, founded theology, philosophy, law, medicine, and Chicago. He established monarchical and republican governments. He is from everlasting to everlasting, such as creation dawn beheld he fooleth now. In the morning of time he sang upon primitive hills, and in the noonday of existence headed the procession of being. His grandmotherly hand was warmly tucked in the set sun of civilization, and in the twilight he prepares man's evening meal of milk and morality, and turns down the cover of the universal grave. And after the rest of us shall have retired for the night of eternal oblivion, he will set up to write the history of human civilization. Force, noun. Force is but might, the teacher said. That definition's just. The boy said not, but through instead, remembering his pounded head. Force is not might, but must. Forefinger, noun. The finger commonly used in pointing out two malefactors. Coordination, noun. This looks like an easy word to define, but when I consider that pious and learned theologians have spent long lives in explaining it, and written libraries to explain their explanations, when I remember the nations that have been divided in bloody battles caused by the difference between foreordination and predestination, and that millions of treasures have been expended in the effort to prove and disprove its compatibility with the freedom of will and the efficacy of prayer, praise, and a religious life, recalling these awful facts in the history of the world, I stand appalled before the mighty problem of its signification, abasing my spiritual eyes fearing to contemplate its portentous magnitude, reverently uncover and humbly refer it to his eminence Cardinal Gibbons and his grace Bishop Potter. Forgetfulness, noun, a gift of God bestowed upon doctors in compensation for their destitution of conscience. Fork, noun, an instrument used chiefly for the purpose of putting dead animals into the mouth. Formerly, the knife was employed for this purpose, and by many worthy persons is still thought to have many advantages over the other tool, which, however, they do not altogether reject, but use to assist in charging the knife. The immunity of the person from swift and awful death is one of the most striking proofs of God's mercy to those who hate him. Forma papyrus, Latin. In the character of a poor person, a method by which a litigant without money for lawyers is considerately permitted to lose his case. When Adam, long ago in Cupid's awful court, for Cupid ruled ere Adam was invented, sued for Eve's favor, says an ancient law report, he stood and pleaded unhambilimented. You sue and form a papyrus, I see, Eve cried. Actions can't here be that way prosecuted. So all poor Adam's motions coldly were denied. He went away as he had come, non-suited. By G. J. Frank Alamoin Noun The tenure by which a religious corporation holds land on the condition of praying for the soul of the donor. In medieval times, many of the wealthiest fraternities obtained their estates in this simple and cheap manner. And once... When Henry the Eighth of England sent an officer to confiscate certain vast possessions which a fraternity of monks held by Frank Alamoin, what said the prior? Would you have our master stay our benefactor's soul in purgatory? I said the officer, coldly, and ye will not pray him thence, for not he must and roast. But look you, my son, persisted the good man, this act hath rank as robbery of God. Nay, nay, good father, my master the king doth but deliver him from the manifold temptation of too great wealth. Freebooter, noun, a conqueror in a small way of business, whose annexation lacks the sanctifying merits of magnitude. Freedom, 
noun, exemption from the stress of authority in a beggarly half dozen of restraints, m infinite multitude of methods, a political the condition that every nation supposes itself to enjoy in virtual monopoly. Liberty, this distinction between freedom and liberty, is not accurately known. Naturalists have never been able to find a living specimen of either. Freedom, as every schoolboy knows, once shrieked as Koishk fell. On every wind, indeed, the blows, I hear her yell. She screams whenever monarchs meet, and parliaments as well, to bind the chains about her feet, and toll her nail. And when sovereign people cast the votes they cannot spell, upon pestilent blasts her clamors swell. For all whom power is given to sway or to compel, among themselves apportion heaven, and give her hell. By Blairy O'Garry Freemason Noun An order with secret rites, grotesque ceremonies, and fantastic costumes, which, originating in the reign of Charles the Second, among working artisans of London, has been joined successively by the dead of the past centuries in an unbroken retrogression until now it embraces all generations of man on hither side of Adam and is drumming up distinguished recruits among the pre-creational inhabitants of chaos and formless void. The order was founded at different times by Charlemagne, Julius Caesar, Cyrus, Solomon, Zoister, Confucius, Thothomus, and Buddha. Its emblems and symbols have been found in the catacombs of Paris and Rome, on the stones of the Parthenon, and the great Chinese wall, among the temples of Karnak and Palamra, and in the Egyptian pyramids, always by a Freemason. Friendless, adjective, having no favor to bestow, destitute of fortune, addicted to the utterance of truth and common sense. Friendship. Noun. A ship big enough to carry two in fair weather, but only one in foul. The sea was calm, and the sky was blue. Merrily, merrily sailed we two. High barometers maketh glad. On the tipsy ship, with a dreadful shout, the tempest descended, and we fell out. Oh, the walking is nasty bad. By Armit Huffbeetle. Frog. Noun. A reptile with edible legs. The first mention of frogs in profane literature is in Homer's narrative of the war between them and the mice. Skeptical persons have doubted Homer's authorship of the work, but the learned and ingenious industrious Dr. Sklimon has set the question forever at rest by uncovering the bones of the slain frogs. One of the forms of moral cessation by which the Pharaoh was besought to favor the Israelites was a plague of frogs, but Pharaoh liked them for scase, remarked with true Oriental Stoicism that he could stand it as long as the frogs and the Jews could, so the program was changed. The frog is a diligent songster, having a good voice but no ear. The liberato of his favorite opera as written by the Aristophanes, is brief, simple, and effective. Break cock! The music is apparently by the eminent composer Richard Wagner. Horses have a frog in each hoof, a thoughtful provision of nature, enabling them to shine in a hurdle race. Frying pan. Noun. One part of the penal apparatus employed in the punitive institution. A woman's kitchen. The frying pan was invented by Calvin, and by him used in cooking Spanlon infants that died without baptism, and observing one day the horrible torment of a tramp who had the incautiously pulled the fried babe from the waste stump and devoured it. It occurred to the great divine to rob death of its terror by introducing the frying pan into every household in Geneva. Thence it spread to all corners of the world, and has been of invaluable assistance in the propagation of his somber faith. The following lines, said to be from the pen of his grace Bishop Potter, 
seem to imply that the usefulness of this utensil is not limited to this world, but as consequence of its employment in this life, reaches over into the life to come, so as to itself may be found on the other side, rewarding its devotees. Old Nick was summoned to the skies, said Peter, your intentions are good, but you lack enterprise concerning new inventions. Now, broiling in an ancient plan of torment, but I hear reported that the frying pan sears best the wicked spirit. Go get one, fill it up with fat, fry sinners brown and good in it. I know a trick worth two of that, said Nick. I'll cook their food in it. Funeral. Noun. A pageant whereby we attest our respect for the dead, by enriching the undertaker, and strengthening our grief by an expenditure that deepens our groans and doubles our tears. The savage dies. They sacrifice a horse. To bear to happy hunting grounds the course. Our friends expire. We make the money fly, in hopes their souls will chase it to the sky. By Jex Wapley. Future. Noun. That period of time in which our affairs prosper, our friends are true, and our happiness is assured. End of Letter F in the Devil's Dictionary. Recorded by Michael Kirkpatrick. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg www.kray.org The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce The Letter G Gallows Noun A stage for the performance of miracle plays in which the leading actor is translated to heaven. In this country the gallows is chiefly remarkable for the number of persons who escape it. Whether on the gallows high, or where blood flows the reddest, the noblest place for man to die, is where he died the deadest. From an old play. Gargoyle. Noun. A rain-spout projecting from the eaves of medieval buildings, commonly fashioned into a grotesque caricature of some personal enemy of the architect or owner of the building. This was especially the case in churches and ecclesiastical structures generally, in which the gargoyles presented a perfect rogues' gallery of local heretics and controversialists. Sometimes, when a new dean and chapter were installed, the old gargoyles were removed, and others substituted, having a closer relation to the private animosities of the new incumbents. Garter. Noun. An elastic band intended to keep a woman from coming out of her stockings and desolating the country. Generous. Adjective. Originally this word meant noble by birth, and was rightly applied to a great multitude of persons. It now means noble by nature, and is taking a bit of a rest. Genealogy. Noun. An account of one's descent from an ancestor who did not particularly care to trace his own. Genteel. Adjective. Refined, after the fashion of a gent. Observe with care, my son, the distinction I reveal. A gentleman is gentle, and a gent genteel. Heed not the definitions your unabridged presents, for dictionary makers are generally gents. By G. J. Geographer. Noun. A chap who can tell you offhand the difference between the outside of the world and the inside. Habiam, geographer of wide renown, native of Abu Keber's ancient town, in passing thence along the river Zam, to the adjacent village of Xelam, 
bewildered by the multitude of roads, got lost, lived long on migratory toads, then from exposure miserably died, and grateful travellers bewailed their guide. By Henry Hawkorn Geology Noun The science of the earth's crust to which, doubtless, will be added that of its interior, whenever a man shall come up garrulous out of a well. The geological formations of the globe already noted are catalogued thus. The primary, or lower one, consists of rocks, bones, or mired mules, gas-pipes, miner's tools, antique statues minus the nose, Spanish doubloons, and ancestors. The secondary is largely made up of red worms and moles. The tertiary comprises railway tracks, patent pavements, grass, snakes, moldy boots, beer bottles, tomato cans, intoxicated citizens, garbage, anarchists, snapdogs, and fools. Ghost. Noun. THE OUTWARD AND VISIBLE SIGN OF AN INWARD FEAR. HE SAW A GHOST. IT OCCUPIED, THAT DISMAL THING, THE PATH THAT HE WAS FOLLOWING. BEFORE HE'D TIME TO STOP AND FLY, AN EARTHQUAKE TRIFLED WITH THE EYE THAT SAW A GHOST. HE FELL AS FALL THE EARLY GOOD. UNMOVED THAT AWFUL VISION STOOD. THE STARS THAT DANCED BEFORE HIS KEN HE WILDLY BRUSHED AWAY, AND THEN HE SAW A POST. By Jared McFester. Accounting for the uncommon behavior of ghosts, Heine mentions somebody's ingenious theory to the effect that they are as much afraid of us as we of them. Not quite, if I may judge from such tables of comparative speed as I am able to compile from memories of my own experience. There is one insuperable obstacle to a belief in ghosts. A ghost never comes naked. He appears either in a winding sheet, or in his habit as he lived. To believe in him, then, is to believe that not only have the dead the power to make themselves visible, after there is nothing left of them, but that the same power inheres in textile fabrics. Supposing the products of the loom to have this ability, what object would they have in exercising it? And why does not the apparition of a suit of clothes sometimes walk abroad without a ghost in it? These be riddles of significance. They reach a way down and get a convulsive grip on the very tap-root of this flourishing faith. Ghoul. Noun. A demon addicted to the reprehensible habit of devouring the dead. The existence of ghouls has been disputed by that class of controversialists who are more concerned to deprive the world of comforting beliefs than to give it anything good in their place. In 1640, Father Secchi saw one in a cemetery near Florence, and frightened it away with the sign of the cross. He describes it as gifted with many heads, and an uncommon allowance of limbs, and he saw it in more than one place at a time. The good man was coming away from dinner at the time, and explains that if he had not been heavy with eating, he would have seized the demon at all hazards. Athelstan relates that a ghoul was caught by some sturdy peasants in a churchyard at Sudbury, and ducked in a horse-pond. He appears to think that so distinguished a criminal should have been ducked in a tank of rose-water. The water turned at once to blood, and so continues unto this day. The pond has since been bled with a ditch. As late as the beginning of the fourteenth century, a ghoul was cornered in the crypt of the cathedral at Amiens, and the whole population surrounded the place. Twenty armed men, with a priest at their head, bearing a crucifix, entered and captured the ghoul, which, thinking to escape by the stratagem, had transformed itself to the semblance of a well-known citizen, but was nevertheless hanged, drawn, and quartered, in the midst of hideous popular orgies. The citizen whose shape the demon had assumed was so affected by the sinister occurrence that he never again showed himself in Amiens, 
and his fate remains a mystery. Glutton. Noun. A person who escapes the evils of moderation by committing dyspepsia. Gnome. Noun. In North European mythology, a dwarfish imp, inhabiting the interior parts of the earth and having special custody of mineral treasures. Bjorsen, who died in 1765, says gnomes were common enough in the southern parts of Sweden in his boyhood, and he frequently saw them scampering on the hills in the evening twilight. Ludwig Binkerhof saw three as recently as 1792 in the Black Forest, and Snedeker avers that in 1803 they drove a party of miners out of a Silesian mine. Basing our computations upon data supplied by these statements, we find that the gnomes were probably extinct as early as 1764. Gnostics. Noun. A sect of philosophers who tried to engineer a fusion between the early Christians and the Platonists. The former would not go into the Caucasus, and the combination failed, greatly to the chagrin of the fusion managers. New Noun An animal of South Africa, which in its domesticated state resembles a horse, a buffalo, and a stag. In its wild condition it is something like a thunderbolt, an earthquake, and a cyclone. A hunter from Kew caught a distant view of a peacefully meditative new, and he said, I'll pursue, and my hands imbrew in its blood at a closer interview. But that beast did ensue, and the hunter it threw o'er the top of a palm that adjacent grew. And he said as he flew, It is well I withdrew, Ere, losing my temper, I wickedly slew That really meritorious gnu. By Jarn Leffer Good. Adjective. Sensible, madam, to the worth of this present writer. Alive, sir, to the advantages of letting him alone. Goose. Noun. A bird that supplies quills for writing. These, by some occult process of nature, are penetrated and suffused with various degrees of the bird's intellectual energies and emotional character, so that when inked and drawn mechanically across paper by a person called an author, there results a very fair and accurate transcript of the fowl's thought and feeling. The difference in geese, as discovered by this ingenious method, is considerable. Many are found to have only trivial and insignificant powers, but some are seen to be very great geese indeed. Gorgon Noun The gorgon was a maiden bold, who turned to stone the Greeks of old, that looked upon her awful brow. We dig them out of ruins now, and swear that workmanship so bad proves all the ancient sculptors mad. Gout. Noun. A physician's name for the rheumatism of a rich patient. Graces. Noun. Three beautiful goddesses, Aglaia, Thalia, and Euphrosyne, who attended upon Venus serving without salary. They were at no expense for board and clothing, for they ate nothing to speak of, and dressed according to the weather, wearing whatever breeze happened to be blowing. Grammar. Noun. A system of pitfalls thoughtfully prepared for the feet of the self-made man, along the path by which he advances to distinction. Grape. Noun. Hail, noble fruit, by Homer sung, Anacreon and Chiam. Thy praise is ever on the tongue of better men than I am. The lyre in my hand has never swept the song I cannot offer. My humbler service pray accept. I'll help to kill the scoffer. 
the water-drinkers and the cranks who load their skins with liquor, I'll gladly bear their belly-tanks and tap them with my sticker. Fill up, fill up, for wisdom cools whene'er we let the wine rest. Here's death to prohibition's fools, and every kind of vine-pest. By Jamrock Hollabom Grape-shot, noun an argument which the future is preparing in answer to the demands of American socialism. Grave, noun. A place in which the dead are laid to await the coming of the medical student. Beside the lonely grave I stood, with brambles twas encumbered. The winds were moaning in the wood, unheard by him who slumbered. A rustic standing near, I said, he cannot hear it blowing. Of course not, said he, the feller's dead. He can't hear nought that's going. Too true, I said, alas, too true. No sound his sense can quicken. Well, mister, what is that to you? The dead stir ain't a kicken. I knelt and prayed, O oh, father, smile on him and mercy show him. That countryman looked on the while and said, Ye didn't know him. By Pobeter Dunko. Gravitation. Noun. The tendency of all bodies to approach one another with a strength proportional to the quantity of matter they contain. The quantity of matter they contain being ascertained by the strength of their tendency to approach one another. This is a lovely and edifying illustration of how science, having made A the proof of B, makes B the proof of A. Great. Adjective. I'm great, the lion said. I reign, the monarch of the wood and plain. The elephant replied, I'm great. No quadruped can match my weight. I'm great. No animal has half so long a neck, said the giraffe. I'm great, the kangaroo said. See my femoral muscularity. The possum said, I'm great. Behold, my tail is lithe and bald and cold. An oyster fried was understood to say, I'm great because I'm good. Each reckons greatness to consist in that in which he heads the list. And Virick thinks he tops his class because he is the greatest ass. By Arian Spurl Doak. Guillotine. Noun. A machine which makes a Frenchman shrug his shoulders with good reason. In his great work on divergent lines of racial evolution, the learned Professor Brayfugel argues from the prevalence of this gesture, the shrug, among Frenchmen, that they are descended from turtles, and it is simply a survival of the habit of retracing the head inside the shell. It is with reluctance that I differ with so eminent an authority, but in my judgment, as more elaborately set forth and enforced in my work entitled Hereditary Emotions, the shrug is a poor foundation upon which to build so important a theory, for previously to the revolution the gesture was unknown. I have not a doubt that it is directly referable to the terror inspired by the guillotine during the period of that instrument's activity. Gunpowder Noun An agency employed by civilized nations for the settlement of disputes which might become troublesome if left unadjusted. By most writers the invention of gunpowder is ascribed to the Chinese, but not upon very convincing evidence. Milton says it was invented by the devil to dispel angels with, and this opinion seems to derive some support from the scarcity of angels. Moreover, it has the hearty concurrence of the Honorable James Wilson, Secretary of Agriculture. Secretary Wilson became interested in gunpowder through an event that occurred on the government experimental farm in the District of Columbia. One day, several years ago, a rogue imperfectly reverent of the secretary's profound attainments and personal character presented him with a sack of gunpowder, 
representing it as the seed of the flash-awful flabbergaster, a Patagonian cereal of great commercial value, admirably adapted to this climate. The good secretary was instructed to spill it along in a furrow, and afterward inhume it with soil. This he at once proceeded to do, and had made a continuous line of it all the way across a ten-acre field, when he was made to look backward by a shout from the generous donor, who at once dropped a lighted match into the furrow at the starting point. Contact with the earth had somewhat dampened the powder, but the startled functionary saw himself pursued by a tall, moving pillar of fire and smoke and fierce evolution. He stood for a moment paralyzed and speechless. Then he recollected an engagement, and, dropping all, absented himself thence with such surprising celerity that to the eyes of spectators along the route selected he appeared like a long, dim streak, prolonging itself with inconceivable rapidity through seven villages, and audibly refusing to be comforted. "'Great Scott! What is that?' cried a surveyor's chainman, shading his eyes and gazing at the fading line of agriculturalist which bisected his visible horizon. "'That,' said the surveyor, carelessly glancing at the phenomenon, and again centering his attention upon his instrument, "'is the meridian of Washington.'" End of Letter G in the Devil's Dictionary Read by Kara Schallenberg on February 10, 2006 in Oceanside, California This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by John Hicken The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce The Letter H Habeas Corpus Writ by which a man may be taken out of jail and confined for the wrong crime. Habit Noun A shackle for the free. Hades, noun, the lower world, the residence of departed spirits, the place where the dead live. Among the ancients the idea of Hades was not synonymous with our hell. Many of the most respectable men of antiquity resided there, in a very comfortable kind of way. Indeed, the ocean fields themselves were part of Hades, though they have since been removed to Paris. When the Jacobean version of the New Testament was in process of evolution, the pious and learned men engaged in the work, insisted by a majority vote on translating the Greek word Aedes as hell, but a conscientious minority member secretly possessed himself of the record, and struck out the objectionable word wherever he could find it. At the next meeting, the Bishop of Salisbury, looking over the work, suddenly sprang to his feet and said, with considerable excitement, "Gentlemen." Somebody has been raising hell here. Years afterward, the good prelate's death was made sweet by the reflection that he had been the means, under providence, of making an important, serviceable, and immortal addition to the phraseology of the English tongue. Hag, noun. An elderly lady whom you do not happen to like, sometimes called also a hen or cat. Old witches, sorceresses, etc., were called hags from the belief that their heads were surrounded by a kind of baleful illumination, or nimbus, hag being the popular name of that peculiar electrical light, sometimes observed in the hair. At one time hag was not a word of reproach. Drayton speaks of a beautiful hag, all smiles, much as Shakespeare said, sweet wench. You would not now be proper to call your sweetheart a hag. That compliment is reserved for the use of her grandchildren. Half. Noun. One of two equal parts into which a thing may be divided, or considered as divided. In the fourteenth century a heated discussion arose, among theologists and philosophers, as to whether omniscience could part an object into three halves, 
and the pious father Aldovinus publicly prayed in the cathedral at Rouen that God would demonstrate the affirmative of the proposition in some signal and unmistakable way and particularly if it should please him upon the body of that hardy blasphemer Minucius Pacinus who maintained the negative Pacinus however was spared to die of the bite of a viper Halo Noun Properly a luminous ring encircling an astronomical body but not infrequently confounded with aureola or nimbus a somewhat similar phenomenon worn as a headdress by divinities and saints the halo is a purely optical illusion produced by moisture in the air in the manner of a rainbow but the aureola is conferred as a sign of superior sanctity in the same way as a bishop's mitre or the pope's tiara in the painting of the nativity by Zedkin a pious artist of Peth not only do the virgin and the child wear the nimbus but an ass nibbling hay from the sacred manger is similarly decorated and to his lasting honour be it said it appears to bear his unaccustomed dignity with a truly saintly grace hand noun a singular instrument worn at the end of the human arm and commonly thrust into somebody's pocket Handkerchief, noun, a small square of silk or linen used in various ignoble offices about the face, especially serviceable at funerals, to conceal the lack of tears. The handkerchief is of recent invention. Our ancestors knew nothing of it, and entrusted its duties to the sleeve. Shakespeare's introducing it into the play of Othello is an anachronism. Desdemona dried her nose with her skirt, as Dr. May Walk and other reformers have done, with their coat tails in her own day, and evidence that revolutions sometimes go backward. Hangman, noun. An officer of the law charged with duties of the highest dignity and utmost gravity, and held in hereditary disesteem by the populace having a criminal ancestry. In some of the American states, his function is now performed by an electrician, as in New Jersey where executions by electricity have recently been ordered. The first instance known to this lexicographer of anybody questioning the expediency of hanging jerseymen. Happiness, noun. An agreeable sensation arising from contemplating the misery of another. Harangue, noun. A speech by an opponent, who is known as an harangatang. Harbour. Noun. A place where ships taking shelter from storms are exposed to the fury of the customs. Harmonists. Noun. A sect of Protestants, now extinct, who came from Europe in the beginning of the last century and were distinguished for the bitterness of their internal controversies and dissensions. Hash. X. There is no definition for this word. Nobody knows what hash is. Hatchet, noun, a young axe, known among Indians as a tomahawk. O oh, bury the hatchet of Atipal Red, her peace is a blessing, the white man said. The savage concurred, and that weapon interred, with imposing rights in the white man's head. By John Lucas. Hatred, noun, a sentiment appropriate to the occasion of another's superiority. Head money. Noun, a capitation tax, or poll tax. In ancient times there lived a king whose tax collectors could not wring from all his subjects gold enough to make the royal way less rough. The pleasant highway, like the dames whose premises adjoin it, claims perpetual repairing. So the tax collectors, in a row, appeared before the throne to pray, their master to devise some way to swell the revenue so great said they, are the demands of state, the tithe of all that we collect will scarcely meet them. Pray reflect, how, if one-tenth we must resign, can we exist on t'other nine? The monarch asked them in reply, has it occurred to you to try the advantage of economy? It has, the spokesman said, we sold all of our grey garrots of gold, and placed where we now compress the necks of those whom we assess. Plain iron forceps we employ, to mitigate the miser's joy, 
who hoards with greed that never tires that which your majesty requires. Deep lines of thought were seen to plough their way across the royal brow. Your state is desperate, no question. Pray favour me with a suggestion. O king of men, the spokesman said, if you'll impose upon each head a tax, the augmented revenue will cheerfully divide with you. As flashes of the sun illume, the parted storm clouds, sullen gloom, the king smiled grimly, I decree, that it be so, and, not to be in generosity overdone, declare you each and every one, exempted from the operation of this new law of capitation. But lest the people censure me, as they are bound, and you are free, to while some clever scheme were laid, by you dispol tax to evade, I leave you now, while you confer, with my most trusted minister. The monarch from the throne room walked, and straightway in among them stalked a silent man, with brow concealed, bare-armed, his gleaming axe revealed. By G. J. Hearse, noun, death's baby carriage. Heart, noun, an automatic muscular blood pump. Figuratively, this useful organ is said to be the seat of emotions and sentiments. A very pretty fancy which, however, is nothing but the arrival of a once universal belief. It is now known that the sentiments and emotions reside in the stomach, being evolved from food by chemical action of the gastric fluid. The exact process by which a beefsteak becomes a feeling, tender or not, according to the age of the animal from which it was cut, the successive stages of elaboration through which a caviar sandwich is transmuted to a quaint fancy and reappears as a pungent epigram, the marvellous functional methods of converting a hard-boiled egg into religious contrition, or a cream puff into a sigh of sensibility, these things have been patiently ascertained by Monsieur Pasteur, and by him expounded with convincing lucidity. See, also, my monograph, the essential identity of the spiritual affections, and certain intestinal gases, freed in digestion. Pages Quarto, 687. In a scientific work entitled, I believe, Delectatio Deminorum, John Camden Hotton, London, 1873, his view of the sentiment receives a striking illustration, and a further light consult Professor Dam's famous treatise on love as a product of elementary maceration. Heat, noun. Heat, says Professor Tyndall, is a mode of motion, but I know not how he's proving his point. But this I know, not words bestowed with skill, will set the human fist a-moving, and where it stops the stars burn free and wild. Crede expertum, I have seen them, child. By Gorton Swope Heathen, noun. A benighted creature who has the folly to worship something that he can see and feel. According to Professor Howison of the California State University, Hebrews the heathens. The Hebrews the heathens, says Harrison, he's a Christian philosopher rhyme. A scroll agnostical chap, if you please, addict too much to the crime. Of religious discussion in my rhyme. Though Hebrew and Harrison cannot agree on a modus vivendi, not they, yet heaven has had the designing of me, and I haven't been reared in a way to join the thick of the fray. For this of my creed is a soul and a gist, and the truth of it I aver, who differs from me in his faith as an ist. An ite, an eye, or an er. And I'm down upon him or her. Let Harrison urge with perfunctory chin, toleration, that's all very well. The roast is nuts to his nostril thin, and his running, I know by the smell. A secret and personal hell. By Bissell Gip. Heaven. Noun. A place where the wicked cease from troubling you, with talk of their personal affairs, and the good listen with attention. Or you expand your own. Hebrew, noun. A male Jew, as distinguished from the Shebrew, an altogether superior creation. Helpmate, noun. A wife, or a bitter half. Now why is your wife called a helpmate, Pat? Says the priest. Since the time of your wooing, she's never assisted in what you're at. 
but is not yet ever doing. That's true of ye reverence, Patrick replies, in a sign of contrition and vices, but be damned it's a fact which word implies, for she helps to make the expenses. By Marley Wattle Hemp Noun A plant from whose fibrous bark is made an article of neckwear, which is frequently put on after public speaking in the open air, and fenced aware of from taking cold. Hermit Noun A person whose vices and follies are not sociable. Hers Pronoun His Hibernate Verb intransitive. To pass to winter season domestic seclusion. There have been many singular popular notions about the hibernation of various animals. Many believe that the bear hibernates during the whole winter and subsists by mechanically sucking its paws. It is admitted that it comes out of its retirement in the spring, so lean that it had to try twice before it can cast a shadow. Three or four centuries ago, in England, no fact was better attested than that swallows passed the winter months in the mud at the bottom of their brooks clinging together in globular masses. They have apparently been compelled to give up the custom, on account of the foulness of the books. Sotus Ascobius discovered in Central Asia a whole nation of people who hibernate. By some investigators, the fasting of Lent is supposed to have been originally a modified form of hibernation, to which the Church gave a religious significance, but this view was strenuously opposed by that eminent authority, Bishop Kipp, who did not wish any honours denied to the memory of the founder of his family. Hippogriff, noun, an animal, now extinct, which was half horse and half griffin. The griffin was itself a compound creature, half lion and half eagle. The hippogriff was actually, therefore, a one-quarter eagle, which is two dollars and fifty cents in gold. The study of zoology is full of surprises. Historian Noun A board gauge gossip. History Noun An account mostly false, of events mostly unimportant, which are brought about by rulers mostly knaves, and soldiers mostly fools. Of Roman history great Nebo's shown, tis nine-tenths lying, faith I wish to unknown. Ere we accept great Nebor as a guide, wherein he blundered, and how much he lied. By Solder Bup Hog Noun A bird remarkable for the catholicity of its appetite, and serving to illustrate that of ours. Among the Mohammedans and Jews, the hog is not in favour as an article of diet. It is respected for the delicacy and the melody of its voice. It is chiefly as a songster that the fowl is esteemed. The cage of him in full chorus has been known to draw tears from two persons at once. The scientific name of this dicky bird is Porcus Rockefelleri. Mr. Rockefeller did not discover the hog, but it is considered his by right of resemblance. Homeopathist, noun, a humorist of the medical profession. Homeopathy, noun, the school of medicine midway between allopathy and Christian science. To the last, both the others are distinctly inferior, for Christian science will cure imaginary diseases, and they cannot. Homicide. Noun. The slaying of one human being by another. There are four kinds of homicide. felonious, excusable, justifiable, and praiseworthy, but it makes no great difference to the person slain whether he fell by one kind or another. The classification is for advantage of the lawyers. Homiletics Noun The science of adapting sermons to the spiritual needs, capacities and conditions of the congregation. So skilled the parson was in homiletics that all his normal purges and emetics to medicine and spirit were compounded with the most just discrimination founded upon a rigorous examination of tongue and pulse and heart and respiration then having diagnosed its one condition the scriptural specifics this physician administered his pills so efficacious and pukes of disposition 
so vivacious that souls afflicted with ten kinds of Adam were convalescent ere they knew they had him. But slander's tongue, itself all coated, uttered, her bilious mind and scandalously muttered, that in the case of patients having money, the pills were sugar and the pukes were honey. From Biography of Bishop Potter Honourable, adjective, afflicted with an impediment in one's reach. In legislative bodies it is customary to mention all members as honourable, as the honourable gentleman is a scurvy cur. Hope, noun, desire and expectation rolled into one. Delicious hope when naught to man is left, of fortune destitute, of friends bereft. When even his dog deserts him, and his goat, with tranquil disaffection, chews his coat, while yet it hangs upon his back, then thou, the star far flaming on thine angel brow, descendest radiant from the skies to hint the promise of a clerkship in the mint. By Fogarty Weffing Hospitality Noun The virtue which induces us to feed and lodge Certain persons who are not in need of food and lodging. Hostility. Noun. A peculiarly sharp and specially applied sense of the earth's overpopulation. Hostility is classified as active and passive, as, respectively, the feeling of a woman for her female friends, and that which she entertains for all the rest of her sex. Hurry. Noun. A comely female inhabiting the Mohammedan paradise to make things cheery for the good Mussulman, whose belief in her existence marks a noble discontent with his earthly spouse, who he denies a soul. By that good lady, the horse is said to be held in efficient esteem. House. Noun. A hollow edifice erected for the habitation of man. Rat. Mouse. Beetle, cockroach, fly, mosquito, flea, bacillus, and microbe. House of Correction, a place of reward for political and personal service, and for the detention of offenders and appropriations. House of God, a building with a steeple and a mortgage on it. House Dog, a pestilent beast kept on domestic premises to insult persons passing by and a poor the hardy visitor. Housemaid A youngly person of the opposing sex, employed to be variously disagreeable and ingeniously unclean in the station in which it has pleased God to place her. Houseless Adjective Having paid all taxes on household goods. Hovel Noun The fruit of a flower called the palace. Twaddle had a hovel, Twiddle had a palace, Twaddle said our grovel, or you think our bearing malice. The sentiment as novel as a castor on a chalice. Down upon the middle of his legs fell Twaddle, and astonished Mr. Twiddle, who began to lift his noddle, feed upon the fiddle, faddle, flummer, and swaddle, a newborn self sufficiency, and thinks himself a mockery. By G. J. Humanity. Noun. The human race, collectively. Exclusive of the anthropoid poets. Humorist. Noun. A play that would have softened down the whole austerity of Pharaoh's heart and persuaded him to dismiss Israel with his best wishes, Cat Quick. Lo, the poor humorist, whose tortured mind sees jokes and crowds, though still to gloom inclined, whose simple appetite, untaught to stray, his brains, renewed by night, consumes by day. He thinks, admitted to an equal sty, a graceful hog that bear his company. By Alexander Polk Hurricane Noun An atmospheric demonstration once very common, but now generally abandoned for the tornado and cyclone. The hurricane is still in popular use in the West Indies, and is preferred by certain old-fashioned sea captains. It is also used in the construction of the upper decks of steamboats, but, generally speaking, the hurricane's usefulness 
has outlasted it. Poe, noun. The dispatch of bunglers. Husband, noun. One who, having dined, is charged with the care of the plate. Hybrid, noun. A pulled issue. Hydra, noun. A kind of animal that the ancients catalogued under many heads. Hyena, noun. A beast held in reverence by some oriental nations from its habit of frequenting at night the burial places of the dead. But the medical student does that. Hypochondriasis, noun. Depression of one's own spirits. Some heaps of trash upon a vacant lot, where long the village rubbish had been shot, displayed a sign among the stuff and stumps, hypochondriasis. It meant the dumps. By Bogales Purvey. Hypocrite, noun. One who, professing virtues that he does not respect, secures the advantage of seeming to be what he despises. End of letter H.